Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> yourself, man. With just 11 days until the UK is due to leave the European Union, the Brexit process has been thrown into confusion and disarray after the Prime Minister was told she can't now bring her Brexit deal back before MPs for a third vote unless there have been substantial changes to it. In a twist that took Downing Street by surprise, the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko, said he was following parliamentary rules which date back centuries. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, is in Westminster for us now. Laura. Sophie, the Prime Minister has tried twice and failed to get her Brexit compromise with the EU through Parliament. And she was hoping, despite the many challenges, to have another go to try to make it third time lucky before the end of this month. But John Barco, the Speaker who is in charge around here, stunned this place by at half past three saying she could not have another try, invoking the ancient rules of this place to say the government can't keep bringing the vote back and back again. There is some surprise and real questions about what happens next in this whole process, but one government minister told me the Speaker was breaking the Constitution. Time isn't healing. It's hurting. Every day, it seems Theresa May's task gets harder and harder. Arriving at the back gates of number 10 today, she'd planned to have another go at getting her deal through, not knowing what the speaker had up the sleeves of his black gown. Order. I wish to make a statement to the House. John Burko has the ultimate power in Parliament, and as it stands, he says the government cannot try again. What the government cannot legitimately do is to resubmit to the House the same proposition or substantially the same proposition as that of last week, which was rejected by 149 votes. In other words, the government should forget it, he says, if they think they can just keep asking MPs to vote again and again on the Brexit deal because it's been lost twice before. Order. Yes, indeed. Point, uh, point of order. You can hear the surprise at his ruling and see government front benchers jumping up to try to push back. We're in a major constitutional crisis here, a political crisis that we want to try and solve for the country. Prime Minister's doing everything she can to try and break that impasse. The chair's ruling is the chair's ruling and it is binding. But I simply ask the question, what can Parliament now do to help end the uncertainty? The Speaker's many detractors suggest he's using his power far too aggressively. March on our way. Stopping Parliament having another say on Brexit. But his fans would argue he's doing exactly the right thing. Strangely, the move has united some leavers and remainers who both want to stop the Prime Minister's deal. So what was the point of having yet another week ploughing away on an agreement that was not going to get through? And, and it's the week of the Council, so she can now go to the Council and really open up some new exciting ground. And we know all these European deals, they always happen at the last minute, so with 11 days to go, something really interesting could come out of this. Well, it's clear she can't just keep flogging the same dead horse now, can she? And she's been doing that for ages. So let's maybe get on a different horse. There's anger, though, too. I think what will happen now is that thanks to this afternoon's announcement, Brexit will not occur. And the people of Britain, both those who voted to leave, but also the Remainers, who like to see democracy done, they will be absolutely furious that their views have not been allowed to be heard in the House of Commons. Those holed up in number 10, still trying to get their deal over the line, had no idea this was coming. The moods turned sour. For me, treating colleagues with courtesy and respect is at the forefront of that reform, and any Speaker's Council would have to have that at its heart, and I simply would not be confident that that would be the case. Well, so be it. I treat the House with respect. Respect? There's not much of that around. The Cabinet Minister told me the government will just have to find a way around this decision. But none of this has been done before. There's no map, no easy route out. And it's far from straightforward to see how the government can get its deal back on the table and have another chance to give MPs a say. 
That said, it is not impossible, and I can imagine now government ministers and government lawyers will be racking their brains to think, can they change the words of what they wanted to put on the table in black and white? Could they even, which would be more dramatic, suspend Parliament for a while and then start the session again, perhaps even only for a couple of days, which would essentially sort of restart the process? But that would be pretty drastic, and there's an awful lot of head-scratching here in Parliament at such a serious and vital time for our politics. Politics. And I think there will be many of our viewers watching who just feel very frustrated. Number 10 believes that there is a huge public demand just to get this done, to get it out of the way. But Sophie, remember, at times like this, it is absolutely obvious we do not have a written constitution. What this place has is a rule book, and it is up to the Speaker to interpret those rules. And whatever else you can imagine is really going on here with all of the politi politics, both high and low. So that is what has happened. This is an interpretation of the rules which John Berko is absolutely entitled to give, no matter how much it drives the government round the twist and makes many people here worried about what's next. Our political editor Laura Koonsberg with the latest there from Westminster. Thank you. Theresa May's Brexit deal suffered an unexpected and potentially disastrous blow today. And this time it was not from Brussels or indeed her own MPs. In a surprise move, the Speaker of the House of Commons announced that he will not allow another meaningful vote on Mrs May's withdrawal deal unless she makes substantial changes to it. The Prime Minister had hoped to bring it before MPs for a third time this week in the hope of overturning two massive defeats. Our political correspondent Paul Brand reports from Westminster on what this means for Mrs May, her deal and for Brexit. Order. I wish to make a statement to the House. This was the moment he called order in the Commons to sow disorder in the government. The Speaker announcing that he'd read long into the history books. Dating back to the 2nd of April, 1604. And since then, governments haven't been allowed to ask MPs the same question twice, so neither will this one. What the government cannot legitimately do is to resubmit to the House the same proposition or substantially the same proposition as that of last week, which was rejected by 149 votes. In other words, there cannot be another vote on the Prime Minister's Brexit deal unless she changes it, meaning all the government's arm twisting will come to nothing this week. There's no doubt now that uh, even if members of Parliament wanted to coalesce around uh, a, a consensus on a meaningful vote, it's going to be very difficult without change. And that, frankly, isn't helpful to the process of an ordinary Brexit. There are only 11 days to go until we were due to leave the EU. Theresa May now heads to Brussels on Thursday, where she could ask for more changes to her deal and certainly a delay leaving her just five days when she returns to then have another vote, perhaps still hoping MPs will prefer her plan to a long extension. It's very hard to see how she can bring this current agreement back in a manner which will A, get past the Speaker, or B, get past the House of Commons. But you still face fundamentally the same choice, whether it's this week, whether it's next week. She will come back as Prime Minister and say to you, back my deal or face some kind of delay to Brexit. Do you not accept that that's the choice you still face? No, because it's a, it, it is not Brexit. That's the problem. That's why I voted against it. For a while today, it had looked like the numbers were moving in Westminster. Small groups of MPs coming round to the deal. But the speakers changed that equation. This week will not be third time lucky for the Prime Minister. Paul Brandt, ITV News, Westminster. And our political editor Robert Peston is in Westminster. Robert, this was, uh, how can we put it, unexpected, to put it mildly, wasn't it? What on earth happens now? Well, you're going to think this is slightly surprising, but in some senses I think the Speaker has done the government a modest favour because they'd set up, the Prime Minister had created the expectation she was going to bring the vote back uh, probably tomorrow, uh, uh, on the basis that she was negotiating with Northern Ireland's DUP to bring those 10 DUP MPs on board to back her Brexit plan, then thinking that perhaps a load of Tory Brexiters would also then come back on board. But as I understand it, and I've been talking a lot about this over the last 24 hours, those talks with the DUP have not been going 
desperately well. So, to be frank, the, fo the focus now shifts to the end of the week, where I would expect the EU to give the Prime Minister a lengthy postponement of Brexit, and she'll then try and put a vote next week to the Commons and say to MPs, this is your last chance to vote for her deal. She'll have to change it a bit so that the Speaker allows it, but if they don't vote for that deal, we will be into a lengthy delay, probably nine months. All right, Robert Peston at Westminster, thank you. Theresa May's attempt to get Parliament to agree to her Brexit deal suffered yet another major setback today after the Commons Speaker said he might stop the government from calling another meaningful vote. John Burko told MPs he would not allow Theresa May to ask the Commons to vote a third time if the motion had not changed. The announcement took the government by surprise, and it means it's increasingly likely that Theresa May will ask this week's European summit for a long extension to Britain's exit date. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is here to explain. Gary. Well, the idea behind this convention that you don't just keep coming back and back with the same measure is that uh, the government is not meant to sort of browbeat the legislature, the MPs, into doing something they don't want to do. It's meant to listen to them, heed uh, what they say. So the Speaker's upheld this convention. I think in the end, the government probably will find, think of all the clever people they employ in Whitehall, a way of working round this. What it might have the effect of doing is possibly meaning that the government, which probably hoped to have meaningful vote three this week, keeping meaningful vote four up their sleeve for next week, in case it failed this week, they might just have to wait and do meaningful vote three next week after the European Council summit. And that summit itself might give them something that they can wave at the Speaker and say, look, this is a bit different from what we did last time. But the government doesn't exactly know itself what it's going to do. Uh, they were surprised by this, bounced into this, and uh, you can hear the uh, immense sort of confusion that it's thrown into the political world by the very fact that there were ERG supporters, pro-Brexiteers, whistling the great escape uh, in the tea room uh, this afternoon because they think it could mean uh, no deal Brexit, the thing that some of them want. And you can hear Remainers, who think the Speaker is secretly on their side, thinking, well, he's done us a, a favour. All you can say with absolute uh, certainty is that it is added to the confusion and, and uncertainty over Brexit, just when you might have thought that was impossible. The phone lines from Westminster to Tory MPs in their constituencies ran hot through the weekend. Pressure applied and numbers tallied as the government desperately tried to win third time round. Yes, it was lovely. Pretty much all the Cabinet phoned me on Sunday at one point or another. Some I answered the phone to, some I decided there wasn't any need to repeat the conversation again and again. Just as that effort was struggling, enter stage left the Speaker. Today, he ruled the government couldn't just bring back its Brexit divorce deal for another vote. Historic precedent barred such browbeating of MPs. Order. I wish to make a statement. Something significant House. must have changed to justify another vote. Word. What the government cannot legitimately do is to resubmit to the House the same proposition or substantially the same proposition as that of last week, which was rejected by 149 votes. There's no doubt now that uh, even if members of Parliament wanted to coalesce around uh, a consensus on a meaningful vote, it's going to be very difficult without change. And that, frankly, isn't helpful to the process of an ordinary Brexit. Last week, the Prime Minister lost her second attempt to get her Brexit divorce deal passed by 149. So she needs 75 converts to cross over to her side to win third time round. This weekend's calls were focused on the DUP's 10 MPs and the 75 Tories who voted against her. Even if she got the DUP on side, she might only get up to 40 pro-Brexit Tory MP rebels back right now, leaving her 25 MPs short of a majority thanks to pro-Brexit Tory MPs and half a dozen pro-Remain ones too. But the whips were on your case over the weekend. Well, actually, it was number 10 who gave me the phone call. But, I mean, you know, I think they rang up knowing the answer. So I don't think I was put under. The, the thumb screws weren't applied. And there's absolutely no way you're buckling. You think there's probably half a dozen in your On camp. my side of things, there's half a dozen. And I think that that number may go up, it may not. It depends on the circumstances next week. But you add that to the ERG hardcore yeah. and you think it's not going to pass. I, I do not see the Labour rebels in numbers that would counteract 
uh, the, the likely sort of e combination of the ERG hardcore and ourselves. Those under pressure to change sides seem to acknowledge the speaker's point that a third meaningful vote wouldn't really be about a new deal. At the moment, nothing has changed in terms of uh, the withdrawal agreement. And for colleagues like myself, for whom you know it was always a terrible framework as it stood, that's still the case. The different cabinet ministers have different styles, um, but the message always the same is, come on, come on, let's just get it over with, let's get on with it. There was bafflement among some EU leaders over the Speaker's ruling. Bafflement too that Theresa May seemed to carry on despite so many brutal setbacks. Kijk, ik heb ook alle respect voor Theresa May. Ze doet me af en toe denken aan die, dat type uit Monty Python waar alle armen en benen af zijn en dan zegt tegen de tegenstander: Let's call it a draw. <laughs> the Black Knight always triumphs. How are you? Come on then. All right. We call it a draw. Well, we need to consider the, uh, the, the speaker's comments uh, and look at that and obviously give it due consideration. Then that's what we'll do. The Brexit secretary reacting to the speaker landing another pile of pain in the government's in tray, just when he might have thought it couldn't get worse. Well, well now joining us now from inside Parliament is the Conservative MP and member of the pro Brexit European Research Group, Owen Patterson. Earlier today, he joined 22 other Tory MPs in writing a letter to the Daily Telegraph saying that no deal was still an option and that it would lead in the end to a better deal with the EU. So, uh, Mr. Patterson, thank you for joining us. Um, the Speaker's done you a favour, hasn't he? I mean, he's probably advanced the cause for you. Hi, good evening. Yes, I'm, I'm delighted. It's very good news, this. Uh, I couldn't see the point in bringing back virtually identical text to the Commons to be defeated, to be defeated for yet another time, for the third time. We might have had a few people who might have voted for it, but there's still, I think, talking to MPs this morning would have been a substantial majority. So I think we can now move on and grasp this opportunity. And as you touched on, the Prime Minister has a real chance to go to the Council on Thursday and make it very clear that the current law of the land passed by an overwhelming majority of MPs is that we will leave at 11 o'clock on the 29th of March. And that will deliver the promise to the 17.4 million voters in the referendum. It will deliver the promise to all those Conservative voters who supported their manifesto, which said we would honour leave by leaving the single market, leaving right. the customs union and leaving the, the Court of Justice. And that would tie in with President Tusk's broad offer of March last year of a wide-ranging free trade agreement. And it, it, obviously we're very, very tight Mr. for Patterson, time. In, in all Sorry. candor, it would involve bringing back a whole lot of other things which have gone through, which you may not have liked, which could well pass. I don't see why. We are, we've got a strong hand. We can leave on the 29th. We save ourselves £39 billion, pounds, which is £64 million pounds per constituency. And we are in a position to look the EU in the eye and say, right, let's go back to your offer of a wide-ranging free trade agreement, which Tusk made back in well, March. You, and, you, and obviously there isn't time to do that immediately. Well, so you can use no. the proposals under the Malthouse Compromise no. to have status yeah. on tariffs and quotas. Well, and other areas. You, you, that, you, you, know, Mr. Bring... You, you know Mrs May better than anybody and you know that she would not tolerate a no deal settlement. So she would have to go. You'd have to get rid of her, wouldn't you? Well, we have this phrase no deal. It's, it would be a managed world trade terms for probably quite a brief period because the EU has no, in a all huge honesty, it would be a no voters. deal. That's what you mean by a no deal. It would be managed world trade terms and under the compression it would concentrate their minds remarkably and they would rapidly discuss a free trade agreement as was made clear when I saw uh, Monsieur Barnier discussing the ERG paper on the Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland border. It was right, quite so clear in discussions brings, with... Whatever hey, she people, brings back, whatever she brings back next week, you'll vote against it. Let, let me finish the sentence. It was made very clear in those discussions that that free trade offer is very much there and can be picked up. And under the compression of shortage of time, make it very clear that we will leave, we will honour the promise to the 17.4 million people, that will bring them to the table. Uh, that what is are you a going fact. to do if we don't leave? What are you going to do if we don't leave? Uh, if, if we don't leave, I mean, this whole saga carries on and people will be dismayed. People come up to me in the tube, on the trains, say, just get on with it. I talk to businesses, they are prepared. And they say there will be a wall of investment money once there is certainty. Mr. Patterson, the you, last know, thing you, we know, want. you know that business is absolutely horrified with what's going on today. A very prominent financial services outfit today declared that at least 
uh, six billion pounds worth of investment have gone abroad. The whole thing is a shambles, and it's a shambles of Parliament's making and yours too. I don't agree. I was rung by a very successful businessman who has created hundreds of million pounds worth of wealth and tens mm. of thousands of jobs, and he was made it very clear to me that he, his colleagues, his suppliers and his customers were ready. They'd taken the necessary steps and they said the worst thing facing them is uncertainty. The very worst thing this country wants is another two years of wrangling on this issue. Oh, we Patterson, should leave on the 29th as is the current law of the land oh, and Patterson, negotiate a free trade very agreement. Very good of you to talk to us. Thank you very much indeed. Now here with me now is the Conservative MP Rachel McLean who voted for Theresa May's deal last week. The Speaker has a point, doesn't he? I mean, voting again and again for, uh, and losing by massive majorities is absurd. Oh, yeah. I mean, technically, the Speaker's absolutely correct, correct on that. And I think, actually, this is quite helpful in one respect, because the government cannot bring back, as Mr Patterson said, the same vote. So something will have to change to unblock this logjam and actually deliver what voters want, which is certainty, and for us to get on with it. So that job is going to fall to the capable hands of Stephen Barclay who advocated what he had negotiated in Strasbourg and Brussels last week mm. and then voted against it. Do you mm. have confidence in him? I do. I think he's doing How a... How you have confidence? Well, I think, look, I think he's doing a very good job. What he voted against was not what he'd negotiated. It was just he voted against taking no deal off the table and he voted against a second referendum, and that's fair enough because he's... No, no, no. What confirmed... he actually voted against was what he just advocated seconds before he went to vote. Yeah, so he, he voted against, as I understand it, I haven't checked his record, I think he voted against extending Article 50, which is what I also voted against mm. and a number of us did, because we actually want to leave, we want to get out and deliver what people voted for, especially in my constituency. It's a very, very strong mandate for us So you're afraid that what the Speaker has actually done is to advance the cause of the Remainers? I think he's, in a sense, he's, he's just increased the risk that either we, we end up with a very long extension mm. or we do leave without a deal. So that's why you'll see people on both sides of this argument thinking it's good news. I guess I'm more in the middle of this argument. I want us to leave but with the deal. And I think there is a good chance we will get the deal through next week. So what do you say to your colleague Owen Patterson, who's just said he doesn't believe in a deal of any sort, he wants no deal? Well, he's got very long-standing views and he's perfectly entitled to have them and I have a difference of opinion to him. We all have different views as members of Parliament. We have to think about our constituents and the promises that we made and the issues that our businesses and citizens raise with us. But you're members of the same party and your party is in power, is in government and is presiding over a total shambles. This is a complete shambles, one of the worst catastrophes, constitutional crisis that this country has faced since the Second World War. Of course it is. But this is a very divisive issue. It's dividing the country. It's dividing every political party. And, you know, you know yourself that there are strongly held views. People like Mr Patterson have had them for many years, way before I was a member of Parliament. People on the other side of the argument also have those strongly held views inside the same party. It would take the negotiation skills of, of a saint to try and bring all that together without this turmoil. Rachel McLean, thank you very much My indeed. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.